plant like protists are the main part of the plankton organisms which are responsible for 50% of the photosynthesis so these plant like protists include something called dinoflagellates as you can see here dinoflagellates so dinoflagellates as the name indicate they have you know two flagella but the way the flagellum is very different one flagellum is you know around its body one is only uh, is coming down so they are actually you know like you know they are called as whirling whips because they keep uh, rotating and uh, you know swimming so whirling whips of ocean because of the different uh, shapes or different sizes of the flagella and uh, they have you know you can see they come in beautiful colors because of the pigments they do have pigments uh, which are responsible for their photosynthesis because they are autotrophic so dinoflagellates actually are uh, the major producers of ocean uh, they but the the problem with them is some of these you know dinoflagellates can cause a disease there is one particular dinoflagellate which is called as goniolox you know what it it does it causes a red tide in the sea as you see in the picture here so red tide red tide is the sea turns red in color it is because these organisms multiply at a, you know so much rate that you know the entire sea that part looks red in color it's called red tide it's very very dangerous because this goniolox the organism responsible for the red tide is it produces a neurotoxin which is very toxic to the shellfish and the fish which live around there if anyone eats those fish or the shellfish uh, which live around red tide it will create food poisoning for them so generally people uh, do not avoid fishing around the red tide because they know that all the uh, shelled shelled animals there and fishes would have uh, fed on these goniolocks so this is very uh, interesting phenomenon shown by uh, you know goniolocks which belongs to dinoflagellates and apart from that you also have one more group of interesting animals called diatoms so diatoms are also plant like protists okay diatoms so they also have chlorophylls and they are interesting because they have a body which is looks like a soap box so you you see soap boxes they have a lid and there is inside part so they have two shells okay which are fitting uh, one over the other like a soap box so whenever they have to divide so both the boxes come separate each half will produce another half and that's how they divide correct so these diatoms are well known because they have in the shell a lot of silica is there correct so i am sure you would have heard about the term called diatomaceous earth so as you can see here diatomaceous earth is produced by you know powdering these uh, diatoms it is highly used for various purposes it is used for polishing it is used uh, for you know scrubbing uh, because it has uh, that silica especially people use it uh, to add it into those uh, exfoliating creams and all that they add this diatom even in the toothpaste they add this diatomaceous earth because it uh, it is little rough so it helps to clean up well and apart from that they are used not only there you know they are used for um, in the nights right to you know when they keep they they make a paint on the roads so that you, it's visible so to make it visible they add this diatomaceous earth into that paint so it shines in the night so the the driver knows uh, that line very clearly even in the middle of the night it shines because of the silica found in diatomaceous earth so diatomaceous earth has various uses nowadays they say it is also useful for uh, you know as a supplement of nutrition so diatoms are uh, nothing but plant like protists so the eukaryotic photoautotrophic cells then we have fungi like protists so as you can see fungi like protists are basically saprophytic they are the major decomposer so uh, one is called as uh, they are called slime molds 
So, slime molds are two types. One is a, a plasmodial slime mold or acellular slime mold and the other one is called cellular slime mold. Okay, so what is plasmodial slime mold? As you can see this picture, right, it is very, very nice looking, you know, they have in bright colors and all that. So, the, the entire, all the organisms uh, together, they form something called plasmodium, which is a multinucleate body which keeps moving around together. This multinucleate big body, it keeps moving on, uh, on the dead leaves and dead organisms and keep ingesting them. So, uh, that is what is plasmodial slime mold. And if you look at the life history of a plasmodial slime mold, you will see that it has both uh, sexual reproduction as well as sec uh, asexual reproduction. So what happens is, uh, actually, if you look at it, the structure starts like this. This is the feeding plasmodium, okay, which moves and feeds on dead leaves and all that. So once it starts maturing, it produces sporangia. Inside sporangia, a meiosis happens resulting haploid spores. So, those spores, you know, uh, actually have two forms. One form of spores are flagellated. There is another form of spores called amoeboid. They don't have flagellate, but they are amoeboid in shape. So, they produce both kind of spores. So, and then they, they fuse resulting in a zygote. That zygote divides and then forms a multinucleate plasmodium. So, that is the life cycle of uh, the acellular slime mold or plasmodial slime mold. But if you look at cellular slime mold, how do they look? So, uh, cellular slime molds are as the name indicates, right? They have cells like many amoebae aggregate together and they form, a, a, you know, something like this which is called pseudoplasmodium. So, they will have many uh, amoebae aggregating together. So, that is what a cellular slime mold. Let me uh, show you the life history of uh, cellular slime mold. As you can see here, right, it all these uh, amoebae, they aggregate together during unfavorable conditions, they all aggregate together and then uh, they form a colony kind of thing and they all go together and then, you know, they they look like a slug. There is a picture nearby which, which shows that how they look. They look like a slug moving. They are nothing but all the amoebae that has come together to form a colony. So, and suddenly once the colony starts moving, at one particular time it will produce a fruiting body. That fruiting body just comes up, it is made up of again aggregates of, uh, you know, amoebae, nothing but the aggregates of amoebae. They divide, they, it bursts open, it reduces spores. These spores uh, uh, germinate and produce amoebae. And amoebae, they actually, initially they are solitary, they are not combined. Only uh, so they feed and all that. When the feeding becomes lesser or when they are not getting enough food, they all accumulate to form pseudoplasmodium. And you know, they also show certain times uh, during unfavorable conditions, they also show sexual reproduction. So, this is the life of the slime mold. And apart from the slime molds, there is one more group of uh, fungi like protists which are known as water molds. So, water moles are otherwise known as oomycota. Okay. So, as you can see here, they actually, they look more like fungus, these water moles, you know, because they have, uh, you know, uh, this uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, mycelium, which is there in uh, fungi. So, they have a mycelium and then uh, they produce, uh, uh, you know, sporangia and all that. But the only thing is, uh, they are different from, uh, fungi, why they are not included in fungi, why are they included in protista? It is because in fungi the cell wall is made up of chitin, but these uh, water molds, their, their cell wall is made up of cellulose, right? So that is why they put them under protista, not under fungi. And apart from that, in fungi, during the life cycle of a fungi, you will never see a motile structure. In fungi, they never produce motile structures with flagella, cilia and all that. But water molds, in their life, they produce spores which are called as zoospores, which are highly motile, right? They have small flagella and they can move around in the water and all that. So, because of these two reasons, they have included them in the protist, fungi-like protist, not in fungi. 
cellulose cell wall and production of zoospores. And uh, what do they do? These water moles actually, you know, they live on the dead fish. See this beautiful appearance, you know, the, the, the dead fish looks like as if it has some kind of uh, cotton growing on it. That cotton is nothing but the water mold, right? So, uh, two organisms which, uh, uh, which belong to this, one is called saprolegnia, okay? And one is, uh, saprolegnia is uh, a saprophyte. It just feeds on the dead organisms. But if you look at one more, which is called Phytophthora infestans, I'm sure you would have heard about it. This is a water mold actually. It caused great potato famine uh, in Ireland, right? So where it led to mass starvation and, uh, you know, killed almost one million uh, Irish people starved because of lack of food. Because their main uh, food was potato, so at that time it was its infection, you know, uh, actually uh, of uh, entire potato crop in Ireland uh, in long, long back. But the disease is uh, Phytophthora infestans, and the name of the disease is late blight of potato. Late blight disease of potato. So this is one example of a water mold which is a fungal-like protist. 